In this video, we're going to continue talking about portfolio theory. And specifically, we're going to talk about diversification. Um, I want to give you a really firm definition of diversification because I think that uh, not a lot of people know what it actually means. Um, some people think it's just you know, investing in different areas, but it's a little bit more specific than that. And so I really want to nail it down. So here's the definition for diversification. It is combining investments together with negative correlations to reduce portfolio risk. So when we look at this definition, what we realize is that it's all about negative correlations. So what is a correlation? Um, correlation is a term from statistics that refers to uh, the description of the movement of two investments. So um, what you do is you run a linear regression analysis and one of the outputs of that is what's called the correlation coefficient. And these correlations describe how two investments move compared to each other. And what you get is there's a range between positive one and negative one and correlations fall within that range. And if it's the numbers positive, they're positively correlated. If it's negative, they're negatively correlated. And if it's zero, that means there's no correlation, there's no discernible relationship there. So, um, let me give you some examples to explain that a little bit better. Um, a positive correlation would be two investment opportunities that tend to move in the same directions. So when one, let's say two stocks that you're looking at, when one stock goes up, the other stock tends to go up. You would describe those investments as positively correlated. And an example of where this would happen would be if you had two very similar companies. Let's say um, the, the companies are relatively the same size, um, they're in the same industry, they create similar products. Um, so two very similar companies, and you can think of lots of examples of this. What happens is their stock prices tend to move in very similar ways. Because if some big event happens in the economy, it's likely going to affect both of these companies in the same way. So if one company stock goes up, the other company stock is going to go up as well. Um, then let's talk about negative correlations. So a negative correlation would mean that if one investment opportunity goes up, the other investment opportunity would go down. So they would move in opposite directions. Uh, the most famous example of this is the asset classes of stocks and bonds. And historically we see this trend over time that as when stock prices go up, bond prices go down. Um, this tends to happen in uh, really good economic conditions because people are moving their money out of the bond market into the stock market to take advantage of higher profits. And so stock prices tend to go up and the bond market tends to go down. And the opposite is also true. In more uncertain economic conditions, stock prices go down and bond prices go up as people move their money out of the stock market into less risky asset allocations like the bond market. So this is an example of negative correlations. Um, if we had a correlation of zero, that would be no correlation. So we would have two stocks where we can't really predict how they're going to move against each other. If one stock goes up, we don't know if the other stock is going to go up or it's going to go down. We really don't see if there's a relationship there. And so things can fall on this range. You know, it could be 0.75 correlated or a negative 0.25 correlated. Um, and so it's, you're just trying to understand what's the description of how these two investment opportunities are related. So the key here when we talk about diversification is we're really focusing on these negatively correlated investment opportunities. Because what happens is the fluctuations tend to even themselves out. So if you, have, uh, if you have two investments and they're negatively correlated, if one investment loses money, the other investment gains money. 
And so overall, they net each other out and you, you're experiencing less risk there. I mean, if you, take the, if you take the instance of stocks and bonds, if you had all your investments purely in the stock market, you'd experience these fluctuations of up and down, up and down as the stock market experiences fluctuations. Um, so there's risks there. You're experiencing uncertainty. Whereas if you have a portfolio of stocks and bonds, the negative correlations between those would help to even those fluctuations out. So um, overall, you're experiencing less risk, less fluctuations, and less uncertainty. So um, something else I want to mention is that you know you you may make the strategic decision not to diversify, not to partake in diversification because if you uh, overall you may not want to reduce the overall return in a specific asset class. So um, there's more that goes into the strategic decision making of how to use diversification in your portfolio. But um, in general, what I, I want, what I want to get across in this video is the definition of diversification because if you really understand what it means, you can make better financial decisions. So in the next video, we're going to continue talking about diversification in portfolio theory and we're going to go through the math and I'm going to show you exactly how this fits into those equations.